Let's get right into it. Number 7. Phantom Phone Buzzing You know that moment when your leg suddenly vibrates like a confused bee and you grab your phone only to discover nothing? No notifications, no messages, not even a spam call from Global Bank of Urgent, just silence. Congratulations, you've experienced one of the world's favorite unexplained body glitches, the phantom phone vibration. Scientists have theories, of course, they always have theories. One idea is that your brain is essentially a paranoid intern, constantly on high alert for incoming communication. It's so eager to help you stay socially connected that it occasionally invents signals. It's like your nervous system looked at your pocket and thought, eh, you haven't been spoken to in five minutes, let me spice things up. Another idea is that your sensory neurons are misfiring because of pressure on your leg or hip, tricking your brain into thinking your phone is buzzing. But here's the kicker, it doesn't explain why this happens when your phone isn't even on you. People report phantom buzzing on empty desks, in backpacks, and even in pockets where the phone hasn't been for hours. That's not misfiring. That's your brain cosplaying as a malfunctioning notification system. Some psychologists think it's a modern extension of the fight-or-flight instinct. Your ancestors heard a twig snap and thought, Tiger. You hear random muscle twitching and think, Instagram. Evolution, baby. Either way, your body is convinced your phone wants attention when it absolutely does not. Basically, your nervous system is sending you ghost messages that even ghosts wouldn't bother delivering. Number 6. Random Itch Attacks Picture this. You're sitting quietly, minding your own business, trying to look normal. Then suddenly, boom. Your shoulder decides it desperately needs to be scratched right now, like it's being assaulted by microscopic ninjas. And once you scratch one spot, suddenly your whole body files complaints. Shoulder, arm, knee, eyebrow, toe that hasn't been relevant since childhood. Scientists have studied itching for ages, and somehow it keeps getting weirder. Sure, we know the basics. An itch is a signal from your skin to your brain that something needs attention. Maybe it's dryness, irritation, or your body trying to prevent damage. Easy enough. But what about those random itches? The ones with no rash, no irritation, no cause, just your skin acting like it has plot twists. The truth, science still can't say definitively why your body invents spontaneous itch attacks. One hypothesis says your brain occasionally confuses tiny sensations, even ones you wouldn't normally notice, and amplifies them into full-blown itching episodes. Another idea? Your brain overcompensates for boredom. If you're too still for too long, your nervous system checks in like, Hey, still alive? Here, scratch something. There's also the itch contagion effect, where just thinking about itching can make you itch. Yes, that means if you're feeling itchy right now, it's not a coincidence, it's your brain joining the party. The weirdest part is that scratching doesn't actually solve the problem, it just creates a tiny bit of pain and your brain goes, wow, great distraction. Essentially your body is running a scam on itself. Your skin, we have a problem. Your brain, no we don't. Your fingernails, let's pretend. Basically, your itch system is less of a safety mechanism and more of a confused customer service department. Number 5. Sudden Falling Sensation You're drifting off into dreamland, floating peacefully, thinking about nothing in particular, when suddenly your body decides to yeet itself off an imaginary cliff. Your legs kick, your arms flail, you jolt awake like someone just pushed you off a balcony in your sleep. This delightful experience is called a hypnic jerk, and while scientists can describe it, they still can't explain it, not fully. Not in a way that doesn't make your body sound like it's running Windows 95. One theory says this happens because your muscles relax faster than your brain expects, so your brain panics. It's like the brain is watching you fall asleep and goes, Wait, why are we shutting down? Are we dying? Quick, jump. So your body listens and kicks like it's auditioning for a ninja movie. Another theory is evolutionary. Back in the ancient days, humans slept in trees. So maybe the falling sensation was your brain's way of checking. Hey buddy, don't fall out of your tree and break your face. Which is adorable. Except we haven't slept in trees for a while. Yet here we are, thousands of years later, being startled awake in bed because our brain is worried we're falling out of a sycamore. And then there's the electrical misfire hypothesis. That as your brain transitions between sleep stages, random neurons fire in your motor system and create a sudden jerk. That one makes sense. But it still doesn't explain why the sensation feels so real. Why the full special effects. Why the entire IMAX experience of falling off a skyscraper. Science shrugs, your body shrugs, you, lying awake after the jolt, definitely do not shrug. Basically, it's your nervous system doing a surprise quality check no one asked for. Number 4. Deja Vu Glitches Imagine walking into a room you've never been in before, and your brain whispers, Ah uh, yes, we've been here, we've done this, we've lived this exact moment, and you're standing there like, No we haven't, you suspicious cloud of electrical confusion. Deja vu is one of the most common human experiences, yet science still can't give a solid, fully confirmed explanation for it. It's basically your brain's version of buffering. 
something goes wrong in the memory processing department, and suddenly everything feels like a rerun of a show you swear you've seen but definitely haven't watched. One idea says deja vu happens when your short-term memory and long-term memory systems fire at the same time, tricking you into thinking a new experience is an old memory. Imagine if your brain accidentally hit save and open at the same time and created a memory glitch. That's deja vu. Another theory, your brain briefly misinterprets the timing of sensory input, like your eyes send information a millisecond late, and your brain is like, wow, this seems familiar, because it technically processed the moment twice. It's the neurological equivalent of double texting yourself. Psychologists have also considered the idea that deja vu is your brain checking for prediction accuracy. Basically, your memory system running quality control, sometimes the check malfunctions and you get a false alarm that feels suspiciously mystical. But no matter how many theories exist, no one can definitively say what causes it. You're basically experiencing a brain glitch that science has thrown its hands up at. The best part? The sensation is both comforting and creepy. Like your brain is trying to tell you something important but can't remember what it was. Basically, deja vu is your mind accidentally stepping on a Lego in the dark. Number 3. Sleep Talking Mysteries There you are, looking peaceful and unconscious, when suddenly your body decides to start delivering midnight TED Talks about absolute nonsense. You mumble words you don't remember, answer imaginary questions, or say phrases that sound like rejected fortune cookie messages. Meanwhile, whoever's asleep next to you is wondering if you're possessed or just really passionate about dream potatoes. Sleep talking, also called somniloquy, is one of the weirdest behaviors science has tried and failed to fully decode. It happens in every stage of sleep, from light dozing to full-on REM dream theater. But here's the weird part. The content rarely matches what you're dreaming. So your brain is basically opening its mouth and letting random glitch code fall out. Why does it happen? Well, theories range from stress to genetics to sleep deprivation, but none of them explain how the brain decides to turn off filters and let your mouth go freestyle. During most stages of sleep, your muscles are intentionally shut down, paralysis mode activated, so you don't act out your dreams, yet somehow the speech system gets a hall pass. Some researchers think the brain is still processing language during sleep, and sometimes those circuits fire without context, like a malfunctioning jukebox playing clips of random conversations, or maybe the brain is doing maintenance and accidentally hits the speak button. But here's the real kicker. People who sleep talk often say things that are completely unrelated to their waking life. No memories, no secrets, no true confessions, just pure chaotic nonsense, which is kind of disappointing if you were hoping to learn someone's hidden thoughts. You're more likely to hear someone whisper purple toaster spaghetti than anything useful. Basically, sleep talking is your brain doing improv comedy without an audience. Number 2. The Brain Stomach Link Nobody Fully Gets You know that feeling when you're nervous and suddenly your stomach starts acting like it's auditioning for a percussion solo? Or when bad news hits and your gut drops like it's on an elevator to doom? Or when you fall in love and suddenly your digestive system is like, here, have butterflies. Yeah, that whole brain-stomach relationship is still one of science's foggiest mysteries. We know the gut has its own nervous system, the enteric nervous system, which is basically your body's backup brain. And the brain and gut constantly send messages to each other like two kids passing notes in class. But the exact mechanics of how emotions create physical stomach reactions remain puzzling. Some scientists think stress hormones like cortisol disrupt digestion and trigger cramps, nausea, or that awful pit-in-your-stomach feeling. Others think the vagus nerve, which is basically the emotional express highway, plays a major role. But no single explanation covers all the weird things your gut does when your brain is having a meltdown. Why do some people lose their appetite during stress while others eat everything within a 10-mile radius? Why do emotions show up as actual physical sensations, even pain, in your gut? Why do some people feel sick when they're excited? And why do heartbreak and grief hit the stomach so hard that it feels like you got stabbed with a sadness fork? The truth, scientists know there's a connection, but they're still trying to figure out the wiring diagram. It's like the body was built by two departments that definitely didn't communicate. Your brain, we're stressed. Your stomach, copy that, initiating chaos protocol. Basically, your digestive system is your emotional support villain. Number 1. The Placebo Powerhouse Imagine taking a sugar pill, knowing absolutely nothing special is inside it and then your headache disappears, your mood lifts, or your knee suddenly stops screaming at you like it owes you money. Congratulations, you've just experienced one of the most powerful forces in human biology, the placebo effect, also known as your brain scamming your body, for good. Here's the wild part, even when people know they're taking a placebo, it still works. You can literally be handed a bottle labeled, totally fake pills, swallow one, and your symptoms might still improve. That's not just bizarre. That's your brain pulling off a magic trick that science still can't fully explain. Sure, researchers understand parts of it. Expectation plays a role. If you expect something to help, your brain releases chemicals that actually help. 
We're talking endorphins, dopamine, even measurable changes in brain activity. Your body basically goes, oh, we're healing? Cool, I'll get on that. And then starts doing it, despite nothing actually happening physically. But the deeper question, why does belief alone trigger real biological changes, remains one of the biggest mysteries. Placebos can reduce pain, improve sleep, calm anxiety, boost mood, and sometimes even mimic the effects of real medication. It varies by person, by condition, and by situation, and the randomness of it all still confuses researchers. Some theories say the brain is constantly predicting what will happen next, and the placebo effect hijacks this prediction system. Others say it taps into ancient survival instincts, the same mechanisms that helped early humans recover from injuries through sheer belief and hope. But none of these theories cover everything. There are always exceptions, strange cases, and outcomes that make scientists stare at their notes wondering if the universe is trolling them. The weirdest thing? Placebos can trigger side effects too. The nocebo effect, where someone expects something bad to happen, and their body makes it happen, meaning your brain can heal you, or bully you. Great. Basically, the placebo effect is your mind hacking your biology with zero software updates. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.